How often should your stacking strategy change? How you doing everybody stacking stormtrooper? Hope you're doing well. Um, this video is something that is uh, very important and I think that you know, those of you who are into stacking silver and gold should definitely try to watch this video in its entirety. Uh, just really quick a disclaimer that I always like to share with all of you is that I am not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy in a bucket talking about precious metals. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button, by the way, and, and get that like button uh, smashed as well. Um, so when it comes to stacking silver and gold, uh, you should all probably have some sort of strategy uh, from the onset. You know, you don't want to just get right into stacking silver and gold um, without any kind of clue or direction as to what you ultimately want to do. I've been making these YouTube videos for a while now because I felt it was very important to try to share my knowledge about silver and gold with uh, people who are new to stacking and, and want to learn more about it. Um, I find that YouTube is probably one of the very best resources that you could possibly use to learn about stacking silver and gold. Um, now, over the last few years, uh, I would actually say decade or so, um, my strategy for stacking silver and gold has changed so, so much. Uh, to give you a quick background about where I started with all of this, it was in the mid-2000s, um, I bought four ounces of gold uh, just because I probably, I saw some commercial bunch of old farts talking about, uh, owning gold. And I said, you know what? I should own some gold. So I bought four ounces of gold. And I think the spot price when I bought it was around $900 or $880 an ounce. And so I bought it for around, um, you know, $980 an ounce. So I bought four ounces of gold and I didn't do anything with it. That was the extent of my stacking. I bought the four ounces, put it away in a safe, and that was it. It wasn't until maybe eight years ago, five years ago, my grandfather had passed away, and my mother gave my sister and I um, about 120 ounces of generic silver that he had stacked, um, and I just took those six tubes, put them in my closet, and left them alone. Um, it wasn't until then, like three years ago, that I was going through my closet, I, I stumbled across them, and I was like, let me look at these. What are these things? I thought they were coins. I didn't know what they were, and I ended up uh, going onto YouTube, and lo and behold, I started learning about silver and gold, and um, you know, one thing led to another, and I was fascinated, right? That's when I started learning about American Silver Eagles. I didn't really know what American Silver Eagles were. I happened to own one but didn't really think anything of it. It was probably given to me from my uncle or something. I was like, oh, all right, whatever. Um, but then I got, you know, I was fascinated with it. And so, um, you know, it wasn't until uh, maybe about a year and a half ago that I really kind of developed a strategy, which was at the time was to buy just generic silver, stacking generic silver for the weight, trying to keep everything as low uh, as possible for um, prices and, and trying to keep those premiums at bay. Um, what I did do, though, is with those 120 ounces of these um, coins, sorry, rounds that I got from my, my grandfather, I converted them, I sold them, and then bought uh, silver eagles with them because my thinking at the time and this was again being uh, new to stacking and not knowing any better was that the American silver eagles had more notoriety to them more well known and uh, you know I figured that these were better to actually have than these other things that I got from my grandfather um, you know hindsight being 2020 I would have probably just kept those um, and not have sold them and probably passed them down to my children I'll pass down my silver eagles or gold or whatever, whatever's left after I'm dead. Um, but, you know, it is is what it is, right? Um, but now each year I've, I've noticed that things have kind of changed. Um, I started buying more collectible stuff um, and then I decided to kind of um, dump all of the collectible stuff um, and sell it all on YouTube. And then I saw that what I was doing on YouTube was uh, lucrative, and so I ended up kind of 
shifting gears, starting a business with it. And now I kind of am in the business of buying and selling silver and gold. Um, and when it comes to my own personal stack, uh, for a brief moment, I was thinking about uh, owning more junk silver. I was thinking that, you know what, I'm going to buy more junk silver for SHTF. Um, I don't own enough of it. And then a couple months go by and I was like, what am I talking about? I, I'm not one of the people that really believe in the SHTF situations. Um, I do have enough gold on hand that if I needed to barter or, or sell some gold in a pinch to get some money, I would be able to do so. I have uh, silver eagles. If I need to uh, sell any of them, I will be able to do so. Um, so I really kind of shifted gears again took the uh the the junk silver that i owned and i sold that on my auction now the one thing i have said to people within the stacking community is that you want to make sure that you have cash reserves uh in the event that you know you need to uh, buy something or uh, you're presented with a deal that you really kind of want to take advantage of so um you know that's why i always kind of keep cash as well um but should you be changing your strategy i believe you should be um when it comes to let's say crypto for example crypto was something that a few years ago i was like ah oh, that's you know i'm not ever going to buy any crypto that stuff is you know man uh, man made nonsense um you you don't actually hold it and guys, look at where we are now. Back in December, when I started making my first purchases, Bitcoin was sitting at $19,000 per Bitcoin. And now it's sitting at 56 and change, $56,000 and change. Uh, maybe even broke 57,000 uh, since I started recording this video. So uh, I've seen a big shift in the stacking community. A lot of people are talking about it more so now. They're, they're um, opening up their eyes to it. They're not really, um, you know, uh, saying that it's a bunch of garbage or uh, I don't believe in it. There's more and more people now in the stacking community than ever before who are buying um, cryptocurrencies. And that money that was usually going to be allocated to silver and gold um, as stackers, you're now having to allocate those funds a little bit differently. Uh, those of you that are buying cryptocurrencies, you're now kind of stacking crypto in, in some degree. And so that money that you initially would have been putting all in silver or all in gold is now being diversified between silver and gold assets as well as Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So for me, uh, my strategy is kind of always changing, um, but you know what I'm noticing more and more is that the strategy that I have is kind of just going with what's kind of happening um, in the marketplaces and um, needing to be nimble. So you need to have your cash ready uh, so that way you can kind of shift as things are changing and evolving. Um, the other thing too that I've been suggesting to people within the stacking community is to consider um, not buying American Silver Eagles now that they're forty to forty-two dollars a piece, and uh, rather buy um, stuff that's generic, stuff that you could kind of get for a lower premium. Uh, you can buy, um, you know, the junk silver now at around twenty to twenty-two dollars times face, uh, but it's my opinion that. If you are to be buying silver now or you're new to stacking um, and you want to own silver, I don't believe you should really be buying uh, silver eagles unless you're able to get them for a decent deal. Um, you know, bullion dealers online selling them for $42 a piece, that's really not a good deal. Just about a year and a half ago, you were able to buy American silver eagles for about $18.50, maybe even as low as $17.50. So you don't want to really be stacking this stuff. So when I'm saying uh, you need to shift your strategy or should you be changing your strategies, Yes, you should, because if you were going into 2021 saying, all right, I'm going to buy, uh, you know, 100 ounces of American silver eagles. Well, now look where we are with the prices, right? We saw the whole silver short squeeze panic um, just a couple of months ago or a month ago, and that caused a major, major ripple effect with the spot price and um, the physical prices of silver and gold. So you may have had the strategy 
or goal of wanting to buy 100 ounces of Silver Eagles. But now, because the the way that the markets are, you might have to adapt and change. So now maybe that goal of stacking 100 Silver Eagles, maybe now you're going to change that goal to just stacking 100 ounces of silver, where you can buy the, the generic stuff like this for uh, $30 to $32 an ounce, right? And um, you can buy the junk silver for, like I said, $20 to $22 dollars times face value um, that's another way to acquire silver at a less less premium when it comes to the gold as well um, same thing you know maybe you wanted to be buying um, you know American uh, gold buffaloes right maybe you were looking to buy gold buffaloes and um, maybe you were looking to buy you know more one ounce or buy at least some gold eagles but now because of the way that the spot prices are, maybe you're better off getting uh, maples or possibly even Krugerrands. Now, the Krugerrands, they're not pure like, um, you know, the one ounce eagles and, and or sorry, not one ounce eagles. These aren't pure either. Even though these contain uh, an ounce of gold, they're not pure like, uh, let's say, this buffalo here or the Britannia. Um, maybe you should shift into more foreign gold. Um so there's a lot of different options, but you want to basically have like a basic goal of how many ounces of silver or gold that you want to acquire over the course of the year. And then you want to kind of be able to adapt from that. You don't want to necessarily uh, paint yourself into a corner and, um, you know, be really dedicated to this particular goal of like only eagles or only buffaloes this year or whatever it may be. And you want to be able to kind of adapt. And again, like I said, you want to make sure that you have cash. That way you can uh, adapt and uh, take advantage of opportunities when they arise. Anyway, have your stacking strategies changed? Let us know down below in the comments. Um, you know, I'm curious as to what it is that you are doing, uh, what you set out to do, and then how that's changed given the current market uh, conditions. And I just want to quickly thank these elite channel supporters. And if you haven't become a channel member, please check out the awesome perks and join today. With that, I'm the Stacking Stormtrooper. Check out these videos. Until next time, long live the Empire.